We're at gate four of the Warner Brothers studio lot here in Burbank, and our tour guide is Dick Mason. We're, we're, on a, we're in another Midwest Street. Midwest Street. This was built in the 40s. It, the original design of most of the set was for two major films that we made. One, the uh, storefronts to the right here, those were constructed originally for Saratoga Trunk, a film with Gary Cooper, Ingrid Bergman, made back in the 40s. The home was in the block over here to the left side. Look at this. They're you... just designed like shells. These were built for King's Row. You feel like, look over here, Louis. This, this looks like a, a town. Look at these houses. Let's go down this way. Look at this. Yeah. This is anywhere USA. We wow. Say. We did the music band back here. We did Bonnie and Clyde. We did Gremlins, the first one. John Wayne's last movie, The Shootist, was totally shot on the set. And we used to do all the TVs like Homecoming Sisters and Lois and Clark, all the way through the detective shows we used to make, like Sunset Strip with Zimbalist, Ephraim Zimbalist Jr. and Roger Smith. Eddie oh, Benz let's and, get out right here. All right. This, I mean, look at this. This, I mean, this is absolutely <laughs> now is there anything behind the door they're empty shelves can um, we open the door i don't know if it's locked up we could try sometimes they lock down the doorways sometimes they don't depends if they got stuff that they're constructing inside you i'm afraid this one might be locked though but we can check no, yeah it's, it's locked. locked. locked they yeah. don't want people going in no <laughs> it's just empty shelf nothing inside and look at this one over here. Well, that's the Growing Pains house. You remember the series Growing Pains? Very sure. famous show with Kirk Cameron. Oh, now the door is open. This was here. the exterior of the house. The interior was on the soundstage. This is when they had the opening and closing credit shots on the film. Uh, and everybody could identify that show off of this home. They used to recognize it all the time when they came in here. And look at this. When you stand here. This one is open. You can go in And here. look over here. I mean, it looks like a neighborhood. Absolutely. The grass and the trees and shrubs are all kept up by our greens department. We never know how soon they're going to decide to come out here and film. Ah, oh, here we go. Well, there's more to it than I thought would be. I thought they were just shells. I mean, this is, I mean, I thought they well, were just fronts. This particular one is used as a dance rehearsal hall for musical numbers. They put mirrors in here. And when they have musical work that they have to do, they bring the dancers in, they do rehearsals for a number of weeks before they do the actual shot in the show. Watch your step here, Louie. There's some chords. And we're back outside. Right. <laughs> this is very Hollywood-like <laughs> because you really do feel like you're on a town square with the gazebo and the church. Yes. It's all here. That's right. Now, the church was used just recently on the uh, Clint Eastwood directed film called Bird by Charlie Bird Parker. And uh, they did a lot of work on location, but they did some shots back on the set. Do you recall a picture called Ocean's Eleven? Yeah. With Frank Sinatra and company? In the movie, they cremate Richard Connie's body in a church in Las Vegas along with the money by mistake because they didn't bear any cremation. And that's the church we used for that shot. This is supposed to have been in Las Vegas, but they shot that here. Now, you know your movies, don't you? Yes, I have heard that you are the movie man. How many movies have you seen in about your life? About 26,000. I keep books and records, and I see about 400 a year. I don't go every day. I go to three in one day and skip a couple of days. But I'm on my 24th volume of information, and I've seen every major picture made by Warners and every major picture made by Paramount and Columbia and Universal and Fox and MGM and you name it. Yeah, just, it's just a hobby. It's just part of my life is to see film, and then I mix that in with my job. But well, this is in your time. blood, though. Oh, yeah. I go back. My generation of family goes back. Mother and father, three to grandparents were in this business, live theater, show business. Now, what's coming in here? That's a portable dressing room. Small one. They roll those onto the sound stages, and they, they, each one, a, a principal player, is assigned a room. This is somewhere for them to go to study their lines or, you know, make a phone call, maybe have their lunch or take a nap even if they got a couple of hours of lighting between shots. They can just go in here and get a little privacy on the set. They, they have a lot of wardrobe and makeup. Some makeup work also is going to be done inside. Now, there that, looks, these, that looks there. old to me, historic. It's been, there, so, oh, it's been there since the 40s and 50s, most of those. They're nice inside. They rebuild them inside, but the outside's the same. Wow.
Now, the Music Man, you're walking right where we did 76 trombones. This is all River City for the Music Man. Right here, where we're set. standing. We, we robbed a couple of banks back here for Bonnie and Clyde. You remember seeing a film called Cool Hand Luke? You remember why Paul Newman was arrested? He was taking the tops off parking meters when he was drunk. Right. Right along the sidewalk here. The shot was made right in here. So that's a famous sequence from that film. So you can start, as we try to do, to give people a sense of a true history. This is one of the great pieces of land to do with American film. And about one-fifth of all the real history of American film that we all identify with all over the world happened right where you're standing. Is this officially designated as a historic landmark? Not officially in the city of Burbank, but I think we come pretty close to it in a lot of ways. It's a, it, it's a working studio, but I think there's a great argument there about the value of these areas down the road, let's say, uh, of what they really mean to the general public. Yeah, because I wouldn't want you to tear any of this down. No, we don't want to do that Even though they're just sets. <laughs> no, but they, they use them all the time. They rebuild them, they change them. There's shows in here constantly every year. And not only our shows, but other studio shows come in on rental agreements. And, uh, oh, you identify this stuff all the time. A lot of some great commercials are done in here. I'm a pepper, you're a pepper, we're a pepper, Dr. Pepper. Remember that music? That was all back here. And I had a great commercial Wednesday. I, I forget the name of the product offhand, but it was a dog food. And they had like 120 dogs. They had these dogs this big to the biggest you've ever seen all back here at one time running through this set. So in other so words, you what you're saying is on any given day, you never know what you're going to see or hear Absolutely. on the Warner Brothers lot. That's exactly right. Uh, people taking this tour five, six times in 20 years never have the same tour twice. They've even told me that. So every day is different. Every day is different. We don't use routes. We don't use scripts. I don't believe in that. I think it's better to give the people a taste of this studio the way it is the day you're here. And take that home with you as a realistic part of what we do. People, we're, sh we're sharing it with you. People must love this. I, I hope so. I'd like to think so because we try hard. And I think the lot is in itself is, is like it's going through a museum and it's going to see a working studio both.